Hi, everyone. Hi everyone, I am Sonia Kule, and in this video, I'm going to talk to you about how you can get the most updated um, list of gene names. Um, if you have a list of genes, how do you um, know what the most updated um, set of names are for that list of genes? So it's really important, especially when you're looking at other um, gene lists, for instance, and these are genes on, um, on DNA, DNA genes um, that you're working with, you know, genes that can code for um, a polypeptide um, that could be a protein or a part of a protein. So for instance, let's say that you have a, a list of these genes over here. From whatever study, analysis, uh, anything, any gene expression data, any results, you just have a set and a list of genes. Um, so what happens is that, um, so what happens is that many times from different studies or gene expression results, you may have a set of, of um, gene names like these. So what I've learned from experience is that, um, you know, there's a March 1 gene, for instance, um, there are genes that can have many, many different um, names for them. And that's why I often believe in the entree ID as being really important. But I want to show you. So let's say that this is a March F1 gene here. So if you go to genecards.org, um, you know, you can see that it has many other um, associated aliases like March 1, uh, RNF171, uh, March uh, slash 1. So it's got a few different identifications for this gene. In fact, many genes can have um, previous names or synonyms for them. So um, there is a lot. So I have this list of genes uh, names from some study, and I want to make sure that, hey, that this list of genes, um, I want to make sure it has like the most um, updated names. Oh, sorry, this is here. So this is a list of genes here. So these are just a set of genes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you something that I really like. Um, so I'm going to copy these here. I'm going to copy this set of names. And then where I like to go is I like to go actually to um, HGNC, Hugo Gene Nomenclature Committee. So this is something I discovered that I thought would be really helpful for you guys. So uh, what you can do is, uh, you know, it is a resource for approved human gene nomenclature. So it's genenames.org. And what they have is they have all sorts of things. Um, they have all sorts of things you can download. But what I like to do is I like to go to multi-symbol checker. So what this allows you to do, it allows you to compare one or more search items against all HGNC approved symbols, as well as all previous withdrawn and alias symbols in our database. So if it finds matches, it will return those matches for you. So that's also really important, especially because sometimes, like for this March F1 gene, um, we also see that it has some identifiers here, you know, HGNC number, um, and it's membrane associated ring CH type one, uh, type finger one. So I'm going to just paste it. So this is the site I want to show you. So it's genenames.org slash tools slash multi symbol checker. So you can um, also upload a file as well, and you can just click all of these for now. Um, in insensitive, that means that if any uppercase or lowercase it shouldn't make a difference. So you can put in um, and you can click submit. You can also download the CSV as well. So what's really cool about this is that it allows you, so let me just click all of them right now. So if it didn't find any matches, it's going to tell you that. And that means that you need to double down and investigate why were there no matches for this um, two, two genes. Like what's going on here? Then if it is approved, it'll just tell you that, hey, that these are approved. And this is what this chromosome um, two open reading frame um, 74 is. And that's often what uh, ORF stands for, open reading frame. Um, and then 74, and then this is just the ID as well. So if I were to look up, um, then it would just like kind of tell me that this is the ID 34439. So 34439, uh, that's sort of like um, different from the entree ID. I, I really like the entree ID, but this is just Hugo, um, um, you know, like symbol. And this is the location as well. 
So, and if it's approved, it'll be the same. So these will be exactly the same. This is what you input in. This is the match. This is the approved symbol. So, okay, so all of these are great. And it tells you, uh, this is for, for breast cancer. So that's pretty uh, important, you know, neighbor of breast cancer, um, you know, that gene. So these are all approved. Uh, actually, all of these are approved, which is great. But now I get to show you something else too. So what you see over here is that this one, it says previous symbol. So what it says is that the input you gave, this input actually corresponds to an old gene name. The current gene name is actually C-U-T-A-L-P. So it's cut A, divalent um, cat ion toler tolerance like pseudogene. So this is an example of the benefits. Sometimes it can show you if a gene is withdrawn altogether and it's not there. Uh, so some genes like they get ruled out, um, there's some rulings and the gene is just no longer belonging or recognized as a, a gene for some reason. Um, so basically what's really great about this is that you can just look up any gene and if it um, is an old name, you can just update it to being C-U-T-A-L-P. So I can also download the CSV, but I'm gonna be like, hey, actually, so this one is Kutel. Uh, okay, that's the new name I need to use for that one. And um, this is fine. Oh, sorry, so this is fine. This is fine. And now, okay, scan, scan D3, it's a previous symbol and the new G name is ZBED9. Okay, and everything else seems to be fine as well. So, I can just go here and update it. Now this, how would you go from here to here, right? They don't even seem like they have any letters in common, maybe just an A, and that's about it, I think. And this, yeah, like no letters in common between these two. So how is this possible? So um, what you can do is you can just look up the G. Um, you can just go, I can go here to verify it to you guys. I'm gonna look up this gene here. So PSMD5AS1 um, gene, I'm gonna look it up. And when I click it, it's a pseudo gene. And it says aliases for this gene also include this, but this is the new name. So this is important because if I try, if I look at cut out in one gene list and I have another name and another gene list, um, like if I have this name in one gene list and this name in the other gene list, and I'm looking for some overlap for some reason, it's going to be super hard to tell that, you know, because, because of the, uh, you know, they have different names, the same gene can, but one of them is outdated, it's an alias, like a nickname, and the other is a new one. That's why it's really important just to kind of run through this, just make sure you have updated names for your genes before you do overlap for both sets, like update one list of genes, and then also update the other list of genes, and then you can kind of do overlap. Or better let, yeah, you can also use entree IDs um, as well, which I really believe in. These are like gene IDs. And you can have a mapping table, which I uh, try to provide and share as well. Um, so basically, um, so that's just an example of how um, this, this is the old name here. And the updated name is cut ALP. And similarly, if I try to look up, scan the D3, I'm gonna get ZBED9. It's a protein coding gene. And you see so many, oh, this is cute, Buster Ford. <laughs> That's a nice name. You're also gonna see zinc um, factor, like um, 452 uh, scan D3, which is what we used to have right now, the old. Um, now we also have this and this and ZBED9. So there's a lot of different names. So basically it's just really um, very complex sometimes. Like they just change the gene name. So Basically, everything else was the same. So I'm just going to do equals this. Oh, no, I'm just going to say unmatched. So I have to hunt for these. Maybe remove them all together. The others are just the same. So I'm just going to bring this down. I can also just directly download the CSV um, as well. Like you can, uh, that's sometimes what I do. I just download the CSV. Uh, sometimes it'll tell you if it's a previous name or an alias. <coughs> so now we can just see that this is an updated uh, list of genes for us to look into um, and analyze, which is great because um, for many different studies, for instance, you can go through, um, 
like you can search gene sets and let's say that I want to look for um, the key term like, let me see. Um, so let's say I want to like hunt for Alzheimer's disease genes here in gene set enrichment analysis. Then I can just look here in HP um, pathways. So HP, what will this be? Um, you know, human proteins as well, human phenotype ontology group. Um, so I can look here, degenerative disease of the brain characterized by the insidious, uh, insidious uh, or reminds me of insidious onset of dementia, impairment of memory, judgment, attention span, and problem solving skills are followed by um, you know, severe apraxia and a global loss of cognitive abilities. The condition primarily occurs after age 60 and is marked pathologically by severe cortical atrophy and the triad of senile plaques, neurofibrillary tangles, and neuropylin threads. So this is what this is here. And the 12 genes, I can just download them as a text file. And what you'll see here, for instance, is that like, there are a list of genes here. So like, let's say I want to like look, there's APP, amyloid precursor protein, there's, you know, PSN1, PSN2, these are helping with the processing of amyloid precursor. APO is one of the largest risk factors for late onset AD that has been identified. And these are just other genes associated um, with Alzheimer's disease in the human phenotype ontology. So if I want to look for overlap between them and the other lists of genes, uh, the, the, probably none, but I'm just showing you that like you would want to make sure you have the most updated, um, you know, list of gene um, names. So that's just super important. So again, the, the technique that I like to use is just the HGNC multi-symbol checker. So it's just, you put in a list of gene names and it's going to help provide the most updated um, list of um, genes overall. And this is something else that I wanted to show you guys that is um, related to, um, Um, this is just related to helping find, um, so this is like a pipeline and set of code that I have here. And I have some data that I've tried to, um, also share with you guys. So yeah, Sanya Koda adding this. I have an entree mapping info, and this is basically, um, uh, and I can keep updating this. This is basically a mapping to also help you guys in case you want to use entree IDs. They're just gene ID numbers. So uh, yes, this March one, you know, this is the March one, uh, you know, gene as well. So <laughs> we can also see that here. Yeah, and if you see this, for instance, this will also help prove to you guys that some people will say like, you know, uh, the gene symbol for septin2 is converted to the date second sep. Um, you know, so some of them uh, in Excel, like the gene names can be different. So um, if you put in a gene like sep2 or a mark1 or a march1, like we were looking at, sometimes they can just be like, um, they can get updated in Excel by accident. So if we look up, for instance, this March 1 gene, um, you know, uh, or even if we look up, we're going to see that that's different from the March 1 gene. So there's also a gene out there that's called March 1. Um, and But there's also another one that's also been called Mark 1. So this one has also been called Mark one and, uh, and that's why typically in Excel, it's called one dash M-A-R. So basically um, that one has an entree ID here of six, four, seven, five, seven. So that's why I have it here. So I have even the dates and I also have the genes as well, the entree ID. So if we look up, like, let's look up, um, uh, let's see, let's look up. Um, let's look up Ajuba. Eight four nine six two. Eight four nine six two. So that's sort of another idea of the entree ID 
and the um, you know being the same here. I just wanted to sort of show you guys that I have sort of like this mapping created here. Like um, so, hopefully it might be helpful for you guys. I sometimes I have the old aliases, so we can just scroll through the like thousands of them. Um, if it's unknown, I've also gotten unknown from HGNC multi symbol checker. Um, you see unknown sometimes. Um, this one usually for location, if it has LOC, the entry ID is usually everything. If LOC is in front, then the entry ID you can pretty much bet for the most is very likely to just be the numeric part after LOC. You know, it's a location on chromosome. So there's a lot of, you can see anytime like this part right here is just the same as this. So um, there are a lot of, you know, you could just also, if you want to, if you don't believe me, you can just uh, see this as well. You can just look it up here and you can just see it's an RNA gene and, you know, the ID for this is just pretty much the entree ID is the same. So I just wanted to show you again how you can um, basically, um, you know, get an updated list of gene names. And maybe even if you want to do some entree mapping, um, I just wanted to show you the entree mapping that I had created as well. And um, if you basically just want to have, make sure you have the updated, most updated list of um, gene um, names, which is very helpful for any analysis, then that's what um, you can use is HGNC multi-symbol checker. It'll tell you if the gene is withdrawn, it's no longer a gene. Um, you know, for some reason they have ruled it out. It's no longer a gene or doesn't qualify as a gene, almost like how Pluto didn't qualify as a planet anymore. <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of surprising. All of my uh, childhood science books have to be, up, you know, you know, had to be updated. Is the they used to say nine planets, and that's Pluto is no longer a planet, the little dwarf planet, I think. Anyways, so um, so you can tell you if a gene is withdrawn. If it's just not matched, that means you might have to check more on Google um, for it to get the updates. It'll also tell you if um, it's an alias, and if it's an alias, what the typically new updated name is for the gene, or if it's a previous name as well, and what would the updated be, or if it's approved and all is good and you can just use that gene. So if you have two gene sets or more, I recommend just running each of them through the, through the multi-symbol checker, updating them and making sure everything is systematic. And the other way I try to ensure that is I also just use entree IDs as well, because that way you can just map um, all the old symbols, all the aliases to the entree ID. And then if you map them to an entree ID, then you can also like connect the different data sets together that way. And I have a mapping for the entree IDs. It's not perfect, but it's something I'm still working on um, and we'll keep updating for you guys. Um, so please let me know if you have any questions at all. Um, and again, I'm Sonia and I'm happy I could help.